During the last episode of Different Theories, we have talked about how Spider-Man No Way Home will bring back iconic characters from non-MCU franchises to interact with our beloved MCU characters. Two characters that many want to see in the MCU are the Netflix versions of Daredevil, played by Charlie Cox, and The Punisher, played by John Bernthal. While there have been rumors from credible sources that Charlie Cox's Daredevil will make an appearance in the upcoming No Way Home movie, there's also been various rumors pointing to returns of characters like The Punisher and Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. Some have even speculated that Kingpin will appear in the upcoming Hawkeye Disney Plus series. Today, we'll open up our minds, collect evidence, and form a pitch for how Hawkeye will integrate the Netflix Daredevil characters into the MCU, and how it actually sets up crossover events like No Way Home. So please strap in and welcome back to another episode of In this episode, as always, I will present a grand theory about Hawkeye featuring the Netflix Daredevil characters and explain how it may set up No Way Home in a significant and exciting way. As always, Professor Carnes and Olivia will ask questions, scrutinize my theory, and come up with alternate theories. Is everybody ready? Let's begin. We know that Hawkeye will introduce some new characters into the MCU, just like every single MCU property. To me, the most interesting new character is Echo. We know that this character will be significant because she has confirmed a star in her solo Disney Plus series. In the comics, Echo is the adoptive daughter of Kingpin and the original bearer of the Ronin Mantle. Her abilities are identical to Taskmasters, which are photographic reflexes. Echo serves as the direct bridge between Hawkeye's story and Kingpin's. We see in the Hawkeye trailer that Kate Bishop is disguised as Ronin, trying to track down the criminal underworld. Many may interpret from this that Echo will not be assuming her Ronin identity from the comics. While Kate Bishop is confirmed as a Ronin imposter, she might not be the only Ronin imposter. Given Echo's comic book origins, it would be so easy for the MCU to adapt her as yet another Ronin imposter, copying Ronin's moves and causing trouble to the criminal underworld because she has photographic reflexes, it'd be easy for her to copy Hawkeye and slash Ronin's moves. We see in the trailer that a Hawkeye gets captured by a gang called the Tracksuit Draculas, which is a really important antagonistic faction, which we'll get back to in just a second. So what if this is actually all a conspiracy, where Echo, who can copy people's moves, disguises herself as Ronin slash Hawkeye and fights the criminal underworld to frame Hawkeye so that the criminals can hunt Hawkeye down? This is not the first time that we've seen such a scheme where someone disguises themselves as a superhero to frame the hero and cause them trouble. The other place that we have seen this in a Marvel property is Daredevil season three, where Bullseye disguises himself as Daredevil throughout the season to frame Daredevil for his crimes. And who is the character that came up with this plan and connects both Echo and Bullseye? Mr. Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin. It is entirely possible then that Kingpin, as Echo's adoptive father, ordered her to disguise herself as Ronin to cause trouble to Hawkeye. However, Echo could realize Kingpin's lies and betray him by the end of the season, setting up her solo series where she does the soul searching that she did in the comics. And we know that in the MCU Disney Plus shows, there's a lot of soul searching arcs for these characters who have been through a lot in the movies, and this could be a perfect way to set up the Echo series. Another important character showing by Hawkeye is a character called the Clown. In the comics, the tracksuit Draculas hire Clown to hunt Hawkeye down because Hawkeye has interfered with their plans. Now, Kingpin may have orchestrated the entire event as we have seen with Echo, where Echo interferes with the tracksuit Dracula, who then hires Clown to hunt Hawkeye, who they mistakenly think is messing with them. So this is a whole plan for Kingpin to hunt Hawkeye down. This makes sense because Clown, besides working with tracksuit Dracula, also frequently works for Kingpin in the comics. It is entirely possible that during the events of Hawkeye, Kingpin manages to recruit Clown, setting up more stories to tell with a future Daredevil movie or series that's gonna take place in the MCU. Kingpin could have anticipated that the tracksuit Dracula will hire Clown to hunt Hawkeye down, and this was all part of his master plan. Now you might ask, what is Kingpin's endgame then after all of this complex plan? I think the final piece of this puzzle may lie in our soon to become favorite character, Kate Bishop. 
You see, Kate Bishop in the comics and the series is a member of a very powerful family led by Eleanor Bishop in the show played by Vera Farmiga, best known for the Conjuring series. In the comics, Kate's father, Derek, becomes involved with the criminal underworld. In the MCU, that criminal underworld may very well be Kingpin and the tracksuit Dracula. Eleanor in the comics works with the same bad guys that Derek worked with to actually take revenge for her husband, and she could be doing the exact same thing in the MCU. We could therefore have a revenge plot between Eleanor and Kingpin, which threatens Kingpin's criminal empire. Like the comics, Eleanor disappears, and Kate Bishop, to find her mother, decides to investigate what happened, leading her to the Draculas and leading her to Kingpin. On the way, Hawkeye decides to help Kate Bishop, which puts him in opposition to the Kingpin as well. You may ask at this point, then why is Hawkeye helping Kate Bishop? I think the answer lies with Avengers Endgame. Clint is most likely still traumatized by his inability to protect his family, especially his daughter, during the snap. And the appearance of Kate Bishop reminds him of his daughter, Lila Barton. Therefore, we have an almost Logan-type story for Hawkeye, except it is him versus the entire New York criminal underworld. Other characters could also appear in the series, given that we're currently seeing Kingpin building up his assassin's empire. Most notably, Kingpin's most notorious assassin, Bullseye, who was played by Wilson Bethel in Daredevil Season 3. In the opening Marvel Studios logo of the Hawkeye series, we see a Hawkeye symbol, but in the colors of Bullseye. We know there's probably a coincidence due to Christmas theme, but it would still be fun nevertheless to speculate. Given that Hawkeye and Bullseye have similar names and powers, it would be extremely fun to see them eventually facing off against one another. Also, given that Bullseye is an integral member of the Dark Avengers, copying none other than Hawkeye himself, and that the appearance of Julia Louis-Dreyfus's vow seems to hint at the Dark Avengers, a Bullseye versus Hawkeye Maybe even a Bullseye versus Kate Bishop story could be inevitable and it could perfectly set up the next crossover event, the Young Avengers versus the Dark Avengers. Back to Kingpin. We actually have evidence for his return. Vincent D'Onofrio himself teases return to the MCU by liking posts that speculate his appearance in MCU properties like Hawkeye. Given that Charlie Cox's return as Daredevil seems inevitable at this point, it is only suitable for Kingpin to return to the MCU as well. The nice thing here is that since Loki has already established multiverses and variants, Marvel could simply let Charlie Cox, Vincent D'Onofrio, and John Bernthal play the MCU variants of their Netflix characters. This way, Marvel could rehire the actors they liked from these shows while rebooting these properties and fit them into the grand MCU narrative. In this universe, Kingpin could have succeeded from his Daredevil season three plan and become the criminal mastermind of New York City, secretly orchestrating events to serve as a foil to our heroes. If this is true, then this has really, really exciting implications for Spider-Man No Way Home, which could be the natural next place for Kingpin to show up, along with his arch nemesis, Daredevil. We currently know that No Way Home is setting up a multiversal Sinister Six, including Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, Sandman, Electro, and Lizard. However, if you do the head count, you will see that we only have five characters in the Sinister Six. Marvel's probably not going to just change into a five people group and call them the Sinister Five. So he must have a mysterious six villain missing from the list. Whoever this villain is must be an exciting and unexpected appearance, or otherwise Marvel wouldn't have kept him under wraps. Kingpin could easily fill the spot as the sixth antagonist, working with Norman Osborn and utilizing his wealth, power, and connections to build an army for the Sinister Six to lead. Such a lineup will also be a nice callback to Into the Spider-Verse, where we also saw the Kingpin and Green Goblin working together. This opens doors for both the MCU and Sony's Spider-Man universe, creating a possibility for all the important Spider-Man characters to reunite on the big screen through the multiverse. We'll have the three Spider-Men teaming up with Daredevil versus the Sinister Six and the entire New York criminal underworld. Such a storyline could be further explored in future Spider-Verse or multiverse movies. And lastly, before I rest my case, remember that Hawkeye happens during Christmas. And what else happens during Christmas? Spider-Man No Way Home. So the connection here should be very, very obvious.
that I actually do have a question for you, Harry, and it's about an omission, I believe, in your theory. But I was wondering what you think of the post credit scene in Black Widow, where we see Yelena and Val showing, showing Yelena's Clint, Clint's picture and saying, this is the man that killed your sister. So do you think that's going to come to play in the Hawkeye show, or do you think it's going to be something that we sit on for a while and that they save for later? I definitely think it's going to be in the Hawkeye show, because given the popularity of Yelena, I would say that the MCU would really want to capitalize on it, but I don't think Yelena will be a threat in the show. She's probably going to show up. She's going to have that fight with Kate Bishop that everybody seems to really want to see. But I think Yelena will soon realize because Yelena is a good person from the bottom of her heart. She's going to soon realize that what she's dealing with is actually a very sinister force. And Yelena is going to change her mind. I think her beef with Hawkeye lies within a misunderstanding. That's where the conflict came from, is that misunderstanding instead of a real, I would say a real hate between the two of them. So as soon as they clarify that, I think Yelena could actually serve as part of the team later on in the season, fight along with Hawkeye and Kate. I definitely agree. I definitely think she's not going to be an overarching sort of threat, but I do think it does go to the credence of like considering what is Val's interest in wanting Clint dead? It's very possible, like you said earlier in your theory, that perhaps she's working with Kingpin or perhaps it's connected to the Dark Avengers storyline later, but it's definitely worthwhile to think about for a while. Because on the surface, I mean, there's no really real reason that Clint is a threat to her as, as far as we know. I think a good way is if we were to look at Mysterio from Spider-Man Far From Home, we start to see that some of the Earth villains after Endgame, there's a vacuum in terms of superhero spots being left vacant, and there are people who are trying to fill that spot. So I think Val, with her deep connections with Hydra, and given that Kingpin and Norman Osborn, who's probably going to appear in the MCU and not Willem Dafoe version, the MCU version of him, I think probably these people want to work together and really take control of that hero narrative, which is what the Dark Avengers story is about, is Norman Osborn wanting to take control of that narrative. So taking the original hero out of the equation can leave a vacant spot for them to get the imposter hero in. And that's why Bullseye is really significant because Val wants to kill Hawkeye so she can reinstate Bullseye as part of the team. And I think that could be a very sinister plot that could make the Earth villains really high state because instead of just this one person who wants to rule the world, you have this entire almost Illuminati-like villain organization and that serves as a nice contrast to the illuminati that are probably going to set up for the heroes which is really exciting for an earth crossover event yeah i think those are great tie-ins especially because we need to sort of find a way to shift the earth storylines now that things are going more cosmic so that they're still as interesting and i think makes turning it into a societal point about the redefinition of what is a hero like we started to see in falcon the winter soldier with um, John Walker would definitely be a great direction to keep going in. Can I just object to one thing here? I'm, I'm sort of playing the role of the devil's advocate tonight. Um, and uh, that is the idea that Val just wants to take out Hawkeye to create an even bigger sort of power vacuum. Like we're in, you know, pretty chaotic world here. I think, you know, it, it's not crystal clear to me why Val needs to take out Hawkeye in order to create a Dark Avengers or, or any other sort of organization. I think it's more likely that we'll see Hawkeye, um, you know, sort of pursuing heroics that run afoul of Kingpin and that, that that's ultimately the motivation for getting him out of the way. It's not going to be, oh, we need, you know, we need to just clear him off the table so we can and create a new super team. I think it's going to be, you know, he's going to be doing some Ronin style heroics. I mean, you know, what do we see him doing as Ronin? He's breaking up, you know, some sort of criminal enterprise. So I think we're going to see him doing something similar. And that's where he's gonna that, that's where he's gonna cross Kingpin and Kingpin's gonna bring Val into the equation. So that's my my only criticism of, of that piece of the theory. But you know, overall that's a pretty in, in the grand scheme, that's a pretty small note on a pretty terrific theory, Harry. As always, thank you everyone for tuning in to another episode of Different Theories. We hope you really enjoyed this particular Kingpin theory, and we really hope that. At least 1% of this theory is going to happen in the actual show. But again, for different theories, the theories are meant to be different. They're supposed to be more wish fulfillment than actual aiming for accuracy. So you just have to bear with us here. We'll, of course, have more theories coming out in the future. We'll have a future episode more on Spider-Man No Way Home as we receive more information and the inevitable second trailer for more plot speculations and alternate theories. In the meantime, thanks again for tuning into this episode, and we'll see you in another episode of Different Theories.